Man, Hephaestus has it rough, dude. I honestly feel for the guy. If Ares is the guy everyone makes fun of, then Hephaestus is the guy no one pays attention to. Neither of these brothers can catch a break, it seems. Hephaestus is master of the forge. He's the god of craftsmen, fire, and volcanoes. We'll go more in depth on that stuff later, because right now, I want to talk about Hephaestus' origins, and how, as usual, they're a bit hazy. Hephaestus is almost certainly the son of Hera, because she's always attributed to being his mother, but the father is a different story. Sometimes the father is Zeus, but other times there is no father. Hera conceived a child all on her own, as revenge for Zeus conceiving Athena all on his own. There's a slight problem with this, because according to one of Athena's origins, Hephaestus is the one who cracks Zeus's skull open, allowing Athena to spring forth. Don't try to make a coherent timeline of it, there are often multiple versions of the same story due to the nature of ideas drifting. Regardless though, Hera is the mother of Hephaestus. You would think Hera, being the goddess of motherhood and all, would treat her own children differently than the way she treats Zeus's illegitimate children, but you'd be wrong. Hera gave birth to Hephaestus, but upon looking at him, she thought he was hideous, ugly and disgusting. So what's she do? Well, she throws him off Mount Olympus. Hephaestus fell from the home of the gods and he landed on an island called Lemnos. Upon hitting the ground, he broke his leg and he became lame, both in the old-fashioned sense of not being able to walk normally, and in the modern sense of being rejected by his peers. Hephaestus would remember this traumatic event he suffered at the hands of his mother, and he wanted revenge. Being the god of craftsmen, Hephaestus wasted no time devising a plan to hurt Hera. Years passed, and he eventually returned to Mount Olympus. Without anyone noticing, Hephaestus set up a trap near Hera's throne, and when she went to sit down, she was ensnared and strapped to the throne, unable to move. In some versions of the myth, she was trapped for days. The myths don't say if the trap actively hurt Hera, or if it just kept her bound. That doesn't matter too much though, because we can get a pretty good idea from the next line of what Hephaestus thought of Hera. All the Olympians begged and pleaded to Hephaestus, asking him to free Hera, but he simply responded, I have no mother. Yikes, no father and rejecting your mother? Poor Hephaestus, Jesus. Hephaestus would eventually free Hera, after he went out for drinks with Dionysus, and Dionysus got him very drunk. After Hera was freed, Hephaestus demanded a spot on the Olympian council, which the Olympians allowed, surprisingly. Maybe they felt bad for poor old Hephaestus, or maybe they didn't want him to trap all of them. Either way, Hephaestus became an Olympian. Now that he was an Olympian, Zeus and Hera decided to marry Hephaestus off to Aphrodite. This was done to ensure there would be less fighting amongst the gods, because everyone wanted a piece of Aphrodite. This marriage didn't last long though, because if you remember, Hephaestus is ugly, and Aphrodite, the goddess of beauty, did not want to be seen with an ugly person. Aphrodite wasn't satisfied with her marriage to Hephaestus, so she cheated on him with Ares, his own brother. Wow. Ares? Aphrodite? Jerk move, guys. Jerk move. You both deserve the hate you get. When Hephaestus learned about this affair, he was understandably pretty pissed. But he waited, and he made a plan. Hephaestus crafted a large and powerful golden net, and he hid in Ares' room. When Aphrodite and Ares came into the room and started doing the deed, Hephaestus jumped out and trapped both of them in the net. He then dragged the two of them into the Olympian throne room in front of everyone, and he demanded Zeus give him a divorce from Aphrodite. Zeus obliged and said Hephaestus was no longer married to Aphrodite. Hephaestus then left, leaving both his brother and ex-wife in the net without freeing them, so Poseidon freed them instead. To thank him, Aphrodite slept with Poseidon. Man, for a goddess of love, she sure has no problem cheating on people. After divorcing Aphrodite, Hephaestus was on the lookout for a new wife, so he tried something with Athena. The problem was, it was a classic case of miscommunication. He thought it was a date, she thought it was just two friends hanging out, the usual. Things quickly turned south, however, when Hephaestus tried forcing himself on Athena. Bit of a fedora-tipping nice guy moment there, not gonna lie. Athena ain't a pushover though, as she forced Hephaestus off of her. Athena then wiped some of the Hephaestus juices onto the ground. And apparently, Gaia was feeling pretty horny, because she absorbed what Athena wiped off. And as a result, Gaia and Hephaestus technically had a child together. His name was Erichthonius, and he was a legendary Athenian leader. Just a mortal though. 
From the look of things, Athena and Hephaestus were still on good terms after this incident, because Hephaestus had a joint temple with Athena in Athens, and they're often paired together in other myths. Maybe she had a talk with him about how that was wrong and he learned his lesson? I don't know, character development in mythology is possible. Hephaestus has never seen forcing himself on anyone again anyways, so who knows? After failing with Athena, Hephaestus tried going after Persephone, but everyone was trying to go for her, so he didn't stand a chance. Hephaestus had a few mortal lovers and then a few nymphs, each of whom gave him lesser gods and demigod children, but none of them are too noteworthy, except for Atna. Atna was a nymph who lived near Mount Etna in Sicily, and she was the one who Hephaestus had his happily ever after with. I don't know if the mountain is named after the nymph or if it's the other way around, but that doesn't matter too much. What matters is that Hephaestus loved this nymph so much, he moved his forge down to Mount Etna from Mount Olympus just to be with her more. This is actually the mythological reason for Mount Etna's activity. To the ancient Greeks, they believed that Hephaestus was working in his forge, and that's why the volcano went off. Well, that and the massive fire-breathing monster underneath, but that's a story for another time. Between his forges on Mount Olympus and Mount Etna, Hephaestus has made all sorts of inventions and powerful weapons, some of which I'll list right now, but his most famous pieces are probably Achilles' armor and Talos. No, not that one. Talos the Automaton. The Automatons were a race of living metal statues that basically acted as giant robots for the Greeks. Talos is probably the most famous of these because he was a giant and he protected the island of Crete from pirates. Now if you felt bad for Hephaestus getting rejected by his mother, don't worry, the people love him, at least the craftsmen do. Hephaestus had a few cults around Greece, but the most prominent one was probably the island of Lemnos. If that name's familiar, it's because Lemnos is where Hephaestus landed after he crashed down from Olympus. The cult revered it as a holy site, and they believed the area had special healing properties. Some historians say Lemnos might have originally started as a fire cult, and Hephaestus was incorporated in as a later syncretism. Speaking of syncretism, it's Roman time! Hephaestus' Roman counterpart is Vulcan, and he's kind of similar to Hephaestus in some ways, but he didn't start out that way. Vulcan was originally a god of furnaces and fires, but he had strong connections to Vesta, Hestia's Roman equivalent, that are noticeably absent from Hephaestus. Vulcan's emphasis on fire over craftsmanship made him a more popular god than his Greek version. The Romans had a festival called Vulcanalia, where they would make large bonfires and pray to Vulcan asking him not to burn their food or towns. While in Greece, it was mainly craftsmen who worshipped Hephaestus. In Rome, people all over Italy worshipped Vulcan. See guys? The Greek and Roman religions are different. So yeah, that's Hephaestus. Poor guy can't catch a break it seems. At least his Roman version has better luck and gets more attention. Jeez, even in Smite they choose Vulcan over Hephaestus. Unlike my other Greek videos, there's not really any misconception I want to correct or a particular story I want to highlight. I just like the god and I want to talk about him more. The poor guy needs some friends. Thank you for watching, leave a like if you enjoyed and subscribe if you want to see more. I have a Twitter and Discord where I post memes, so you can go follow those if you want. And until next time, have a good one.